I had this um, unfortunate incident. I was, my husband and I were walking back um, and I keep on mentioning this because I'm kind of workshopping with each person I'm talking to and I'm, I'm coming to a new understanding of what moral, a moral self and a mindful behavior would be or transcendent wisdom. So I was um, walking with my husband um, on the street and this woman just accosted us and she said <clears throat> to my husband, why are, you with, why are you with her when you can be with someone like me? Um, why do you have to, why don't you choose your own kind? So this is a blonde haired woman. I see, someone like me means like a white person. Yeah, like why, why not someone like me? Yeah. And I was so in shock because Seattle is a very um, liberal place. And yes, so we this think was, of it yeah, and this attitude was just so shocking to me. And my kind of knee jerk response was to go and make friends with her, you know, to like, let me understand where you're coming from. And, and, and I couldn't successfully do that. My husband was enraged, you know, cause it was just such an audacious thing to say. And I've been literally workshopping in my mind, like what, is the proper response. And, and I thought, well, you kind of went into this kind of null doubt, like maybe I can float into a higher realm of whatever, right? My husband was trying to create boundaries so that she knew that it's not safe for you to be mouthing off. Just I, maybe you feel mm -hmm. like we're in a community where it's okay, where you can just mouth off to people, but that's not a safe behavior. And, you know, you need to be more cautious of your words was kind of his vibe. And, and I've been still like workshopping. It's literally been almost six months and I've been kind of like workshopping what mm -hmm. my answer would be to her. And should I've created more boundaries and stood up for myself? Should I have treated her with kindness and be curious? Um, and, I, and, and what I'm picking up from this conversation, I've actually haven't responded in some ways. I've been just, I haven't even figured out what my answer is. But what I'm, what I'm thinking about when you're actually describing the painting is that the answer is that could it be, it could actually be something that evolves over time. It could just be a painting of understanding or compassion. It doesn't have to be in response to her but that event engendered something inside of me and i'm still working through what is the proper what is the moral proper so that i am self-respecting i'm respecting her and i recognize what's happening generally in the society that we have and i i still don't know the answer but i i'm curious what your answer would be in a, in a comparable situation because we have all sorts of those kinds of situations with vaccines and politics but let's just take my no. personal example yes. and how would one it's a good example it's a tough example um i don't have all the answers and it's easy for me to say you know this or that but what i'm thinking is if i had been in that situation with my wife or a partner of, let's say, another race, but you know, the differences could be other things if you're a gay couple or any other prejudice or, you know, dichotomy that people are prejudiced against. My first thought would be probably to walk away from them because they're acting crazy. And there's more than that going on. They're so crazy to act like that, to speak like that, to accost you, to act like that, not to mention. They're in Seattle. They're not in Saudi Arabia, maybe where it's illegal to, I don't know what, have an inter, I'm making this up, have an interracial yeah. marriage. I'm sure it's illegal to have a gay marriage. So, you know, it's a crazy person that talking rationally to them may or may not be worthwhile and produce any positive results. You might just be poking, you know, having a pissing contest with a skunk, as they say, and nothing, not a dialogue and nothing positive comes out of it. So unless you think you, you know, you feel necessarily empowered or really skillful and resourceful at, you know, nonviolent communication and talking down people off, you know, ledges of skyscrapers, you know, there are skills in that. Not everybody can do that by being a nice, peaceful, nonviolent, you know, red vegetarian Buddhist. Yeah, you might but, need a police, you know, negotiator who is, I don't know what, has ruthless compassion, as somebody, Trump Rinpoche called it, not just very laissez-faire, anything goes, compassion. 
Mm. So it's hard to know how to cut through. And dealing with a crazy person, if that's what that you said she was, I don't know, I'm just saying, it sounds like crazy behavior. Mm -hmm. So you try to avoid, and I don't know the difference between your approach, you know, to help them and your husband's to lay down a boundary, but maybe he was trying to be protective so she wouldn't like, what do you call it? And, you know, go to the next level, you know? Yeah, of like I, violence or shooting or throwing or I don't know what. Yeah. Know, not being or, you know, people are nuts. Not to mention the prevalence of guns in our society today. So, you know, do you really want to like try to deal with crazy people when they cost you on the street just in general? Maybe not. Of course, in Seattle, there probably are no guns, but I'm a New Yorker who lives near Boston. So we have plenty of guns over here. <laughs> Yeah, well, I thought she actually may have a gun because I mean, she had a yeah. pocketbook and she kept on reaching for a pocketbook. I'm like, why is she reaching? So crazy, my, and yeah. so but then but then I think, well, then I'm acting out of fear. You know, it's like, whatever, you're crazy lady. So this is not is this how is this selfless? Selfless, you know, compassion and unself, unself, unselfish and compassion when She's clearly in pain because she's mouthing off, you know, so there's someone in pain. Maybe she's crazy. Maybe she just got broke up with her boyfriend, husband for, yeah. who, you know, who knows what the heck knows. is happening to her. Who knows? Well, so, that if you're in a position to help her, that's one thing. If you think you can intervene in this case, so she's obviously got some case history, you know, that takes certain qualifications or a safe space, like, you know, the therapy office or a certain agreement where they're looking for help. That's yeah. why I would probably walk away or like if I was, you know, maybe to protect, protect you, protect her. I don't know. Yeah, here's how, yeah. But here's how it's compassionate and unselfish is I've heard the Dalai Lama. I'm, I'm mentioning him just because he talks about these bodhisattva virtues and practical examples a lot. So it's easy to quote and think of and it's inspiring to me. He, he has pointed out that you could, it would be compassionate to save her from further negative act, harmful actions that might come by you confronting her, by you trying to help her, by you intervening in her situation. Not that you shouldn't help. If somebody uh, so I'm, I'm helping her, her well, yeah, I'm helping her not create more dark car karma, bad, bad karma. karma. Bad karma is not that, you know, abstract. If you like almost say anything to provoke her, you know, it's like trying to debate with a fundamentalist about their religious views. It's not really a dialogue and it's not going to help anybody. Mm. Why bother? That's if they a really interesting you way. Yeah. If you don't believe in, you know, I don't want to, you know, fill in the blank, then it could be anyone with their fundamentalist views. You know, you don't have to say, okay, I believe or I'll convert, but you also don't have to try to convince them. They're already beyond convincing, it seems. Yeah, or to take it because I, in some ways, I just took it. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'll just, I'll just, just take it. it. Yeah, huh? and that's so it's compassionate to save her from uh, perhaps and likely a more negative response. You know, that mm. she would respond to you in yeah. some harmful way, or do something that would harm her, harm you, and end her up in jail or harmed. You know, whatever your husband might do to protect you guys. I don't know. Yeah. So that's like a counterintuitive thing about how it's compassionate to walk away you know yeah the people okay. are, the strength their strength in yielding as well as in you know standing your ground yeah, i really like path. that so you have to so find like the middle way not always yield you know a bad driver doesn't know when to yield and when to go a good yeah. driver knows when to yield and when to go and what's the gray area in between so yeah. that's why, like the middle way, not all or nothing is always a good touchstone for me. All right. So on January 5th, you're going to be um, coming to East West Bookstore, which is our Seattle books, our beloved Seattle bookstore um, on January 5th, coming and talking. So um, any, any virtually, virtually. So go to eastwestbookshop.com and sign up for the event. And that, can people find it on your website too? Yes. Okay, excellent. On my Which website, is... www.surya.org. Got, got it. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you all. I love the Pacific Northwest where the green Buddha lives. We love you too. <laughs>